let's take a look at the markets. There's a lot to keep track of here this morning. We do have futures that are indicating a lower open following on the selling that we saw in yesterday's session. Right now, Dow futures indicating a drop of about 180 points at the open. We've got S&P futures down about a third of 1%. NASDAQ futures, however, are pointing to a small gain at the open of about a fifth of 1%. And we begin, of course, to focus on earnings this week. That's something we talked a little bit about yesterday. We've got our first big report in the form of PepsiCo, if we can get that up real quick. And we have those shares that are trading a little bit higher in pre-market trading, about a half of 1% after the company came out with a forecast for full year organic sales of 10% growth. We're going to be speaking to CFO Hugh Johnston in just a few moments for more on that. But in the broader markets, aside from a focus on earnings, there are a couple of very important things to mention. One of them is what's going on in the oil markets, because there we have oil prices trading back below $100 a barrel. We haven't seen that in quite some time. Right now, crude oil futures are trading lower by about 4% here. And you see, if you look at the year, 100, you call it, is right around here. So we haven't seen that, call it, since April, the April-May timeframe, early May timeframe, since we have seen oil at these levels. This even though we have both the International Energy Agency and OPEC coming out today saying conditions are not likely to change significantly not even just in the near term, in the medium term as well. And then the other big macro market move we have to talk about this morning has to do with the euro. If you are going on a European vacation right now, you're in luck because we are pretty much at parity with the dollar and the euro for the first time in about 20 years. The euro rebounding a little bit versus the dollar in today's session, but still we're looking at about a dollar one to one here. Now, you guys, of course, this might be good news for people who are traveling to Europe right now from the U.S. specifically. It's not necessarily good news, though, for corporations, right? We've heard so many companies talk about how dollar strength has been problematic. Yeah, just add it to the list of concerns this earnings season. I was just on the PepsiCo earnings call, and they're talking about increased currency volatility being a key factor in their outlook, Brad. Yeah, and when we think about some of the FX headwinds that have been talked about over the course of even previews that we had heard really kicked off from Microsoft, one of the companies that had gotten ahead of some of those foreign exchange considerations that they had to take on to account within their own financial statements. That's something that we could hear even more from some of the larger global entities, but especially as many of these companies are also trying to wade through the customer sentiment globally, especially in Europe as well. Well, and that's a really important point because the reason that we have seen euro weakness is that sentiment in Europe is very poor. In fact, we just got the German investor confidence uh, coming out today, the lowest since 2011. Mm. That is very closely watched by investors. They're definitely concerned about recession there, just as there are here.